hello and welcome to our video service for the last Sunday after Pentecost, Christ the King Sunday, coming to you from Trinity Episcopal Church in Lumberton, North Carolina. service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. People stood by watching Jesus on the cross. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. What kind of king do you want? In one sense, this is the question that Jesus put before those who will crucify him. Keep in mind that just days earlier, the crowds of Jerusalem had greeted Jesus as their king. They rolled out the red carpet by spreading their cloaks on the road and receiving him as one who was sent by the Lord. Now he is rejected. He is derided by the leaders of the people and then the soldiers, and even one of the criminals next to him. And they mock him, they mock his titles and they ask why if he is the Messiah, the chosen one, the king, he does not save himself. What kind of king do you want? Jesus asked them. And they reply that they want a different king. They want one who is powerful, who can save himself and save others who can take vengeance on his and their enemies. I wonder if Jesus' question to us is much different than that. If not, what kind of king, at least, what kind of leader? And I wonder if in the last week of elections that we, at least we who live in the United States, offered in some cases an answer quite similar to the one given in Jesus' day. Jesus, to put it another and more pointed way, would not have won many of last week's elections. Let me be clear, this is not a political statement as much as it is a practical one. We seek out those things and people who grant us a measure of security, who affirm the values that we hold dear. And it turns out when we are frightened or we feel particularly at risk or maybe we feel left behind, we may even accept someone who we profess decidedly does not reflect our values, but who we believe will offer us security against our enemies abroad. 
and will give us prosperity at home. We vote for someone, that is, who promises a better tomorrow and the candidates of both of our parties tried to offer themselves as the one who best fits that bill. But Jesus doesn't do that. He refuses to come in power, but instead he appears in abject vulnerability. He does not vow retribution even on those who crucify him, but instead offers forgiveness. He does not come down off his cross to prove his power over his kingly status, but instead remains on that instrument of torture and humiliation, the representative of all who suffer unjustly, unfairly. And he does not promise a better tomorrow, but instead he offers to redeem today. Have you ever noticed that? That Jesus doesn't tell the repentant criminal that someday in the future he will enter into God's presence? No. But instead he says, today you will be with me in paradise. Today, now, this very moment. Christians have sometimes been accused of pining for a distant and better future and therefore sitting out the struggles and the challenges of today. But in these verses, Jesus is focused on this very moment. He is promising that those who believe in him, those who see in his vulnerability the revelation of God's mercy and grace will be ushered into God's presence immediately. Jesus was not running for political office, of course, and perhaps it's understandable that we seek from our earthly leaders a measure of strength and confidence, but Luke's gospel warns us against spiritualizing the kind of leadership that Jesus offers. For in Luke's story of the crucifixion, the one dimension of Jesus that is emphasized above all others is Jesus' innocence. Notice the words of the repentant criminal as he rebukes his comrade. We indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man, has done nothing wrong. Verses that follow these are even more direct as the Roman centurion, after witnessing Jesus' death, declares, certainly this man was innocent. Luke's depiction in this instance is a stark departure from that of Matthew who records the centurion as saying, truly this man was God's son. In Luke's account, it's Jesus' innocence rather than his divine parentage that is the most important. And this is not to heighten our sense of tragedy, but rather to remind us that Jesus stands with all the innocent of the world, with all the vulnerable, with all the forgotten, with all those who suffer injustice and oppression. When he is raised, he promises God's vindication to all those who the world has similarly discarded. So while Jesus was not running for office, he does call leaders of all kinds, and indeed any who would call him Lord, to join God's insistent and consistent and persistent solidarity with the weak and the oppressed and the forgotten of this world. In short, the church of Jesus Christ reveals itself as faithful to its Lord only insofar as it stands with those who are the most vulnerable. 
whatever our understandable desire for strength and security, God calls us not only to identify with the weak and the dispossessed, but to lift our voices on their behalf, calling leaders to care for them as parents care for their children. Jesus leaves behind all the strength and power of his status. As Paul writes, emptying himself, taking the form of a servant in order to redeem those who are weak and vulnerable and lost. And that includes us. What kind of a king do you want, Jesus asks. And the answer that most gave him, both in the first century and in the 21st century, is, well, not this one. Preferring instead some demonstration of power to vulnerability, except for those moments when, like the criminal who besieged God's mercy, we recognize that if we are to get what we deserve, then we have no hope. If we choose to live in a world where might makes right, we will all eventually lose. And if we prefer a world where the rule of the day is an eye for an eye, all of us will be blind and the whole indeed will eventually lay in ruins. At those moments, Jesus reminds us that far from promising us a better future, he redeems us today, not only forgiving us for what we have done or not done, but setting us free to stand with those in need around us, advocating for their welfare, demanding their just treatment, and seeing in them the very presence of the God who always takes the side of the vulnerable. Jesus is perhaps not the king or the leader that we may want, but he is the one we need. And our task is to see the wonders of his love, grace, and mercy that we might hear and follow his call. Amen.
Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>